uh, it wasn't really obvious until we removed the finish that there's a really nasty spot on here. Um, I think what we're going to do today is I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to patch it with a uh, patch made of the hard rock maple. I do have some of that ready to go. I decided to fashion this uh, field expedient jig here. Um, I have it down into the pocket. There's a pad because the bridge has its own pocket and it's flat. So is the pickup. Uh, so I put a block down in there and a block uh, screwed into the actual bridge screw holes and then a separate uh, screw holding this nice and tight. This is just uh, being just holding this in, supporting the weight of the router. I'm going to route this out and then I'm going to use this template to actually make a patch. It'll be nice and flat. I've got this nice and level so it should give us a nice tight gluing surface. So well, let's see how it works. All right, so we have a little bit cleaned up now. We'll take the jig off and make a patch. So I got the patch. I used flat saw instead of quartered because I really kind of want it to be a little bit lighter. And uh, I think it'll be fine. This base is going to have some color put on it, so I think it'll be all right. I'm going to get it glued in. Okay, off camera I did a little messing about. I made a spacer just to this wanted to keep popping forward under the pressure of the clamps with the glue, so I made a little spacer there. And I've put some block on the back and so we get even pressure. I think that's going to end up looking pretty good. I'm I think it was rather tight. It fit in there rather well. And I just hope there's not too many glue lines, but it's certainly going to look better than that big knot. And like I said, this is getting stained and finished, so... Uh, with a chemical treatment, so I think it's gonna look fine. I'll let the glue dry and then I'll work it down flush with the top and sand it out and, and we'll see what it looks like. Time to try the iron nitrate wash. And Rosie's applying that. And you can see all the figure in the wood that's starting to come to light. Um, yeah, there's a few discolored marks, but that's why this base probably had the dark stain on it. We're going to go with it because we're going to, you'll see what happens when we hit the heat gun on it. But for now, she's going to coat the whole instrument in this, and we have to let it dry for about a half hour. You gotta keep it moving so it doesn't melt glue joints and burn the wood. That, that chemical reacts with the heat.
Awesome. We'll let that cool off a bit and then we'll hit it with some oil. And now I've just applied another very light coat of the hard wax oil, which is one of our main finishes that we use here in the shop for hardwood naturally finished instruments. Um, so yeah, this is just how it's coming along now. We got probably another three coats to do and they'll be all ready to be assembled.
I have a little test amp. Now this thing's not grounded, so it's noisy, um, as you can hear. But and I'll put it through its paces. Yeah, this is the high mids. Yeah, you can hear that the. So I have it all the way down just because the amp. There are a few things I would like to spend more time on, uh, tighten up a little bit, uh, but honestly, this bass is everything I was hoping it would be. I think it looks fantastic. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this. I don't know if I made this clear or not, but uh, from the beginning, but this was not for a customer. This was just a project my wife and I took upon ourselves just to have something to work on together uh, as she works here with, with me in the shop. And uh, I was really fond of this design, found a, a carcass of a Spectre base for relatively cheap. 
and uh, we thought we can maybe uh, make it a little bit better than it ever was. And I think we've done that. Um, there was a few things we talked about in the intro video, uh, video one. And if you haven't seen that, please go back and review those videos. I think you'll enjoy them. Um, we talked about doing a, originally we talked about doing a natural finish with some of her wood burning designs. She does some really detailed uh, wood burns. But we found after removing the really hard, you know, industrial poly that was on here, was, which was blue, if you remember, uh, there was too much blue down into the, the pores of this wood and uh, into the grain. This is really soft maple. This is this, some of the softest maple I've ever worked with for the body wings. Then we have like hard rock maple for the, the neck section, but for the body wings, it was really soft. So that penetrated deep. And in order to remove the blue color, we would have to sand too much wood away. So we decided to go with the iron nitrate, which is a, you know, this is the color iron, iron nitrate usually turns out on maple. And I'm thrilled with it. It's got kind of a brownish honey, you know, kind of honey amber type color tone to it, which I like a lot. I think it's great. And we used a hard wax oil as a finish, which is also quicker. And being that it's a neck through, it, it makes the back of the neck feel a little bit better. I don't like glossy necks. And I think that's originally why this base arrived somebody had sanded all that away. You know, I've had several people comment that this is not a Spectre 2000 slash four model made in Korea because unless these were stickers, they never had these uh, type of inlays. And yes, they're correct. If you've seen the previous videos, you realize my wife hand cut these from simulated mother of pearl and inlaid them into the neck. Um, they turned out fantastic, and I really think that really helps the look of the base. Um, I slimmed the neck down to an inch and a half, like a jazz base would be, and it is a little bit slimmer front to back, uh, just for my little hands, and I rolled the edges in, so it's a very, very comfortable neck. It is stable. I was kind of worried that I might make the neck a little bit too rubbery by taking that much wood away, but no, everything's holding good. So I'm thrilled about that. Uh, equipment. We have Wilkinson tuners here. Uh, again, this is a project for myself, and I didn't want to get too crazy with expenses. What I like about these is they are very similar to the hip shot designs that I use on all my custom builds. And so at least the function, functionality and everything is very, very similar. So they're good enough for this project. I did machine my own uh, brass nut, the original one that was included with this base. It was just metal plated with some kind of gold plating. Uh, this was solid brass and I think that part of me doing that work will actually make it past editing and be in this video. You may have already seen that. Uh, stainless steel, small gauge frets, smaller than what would actually be on a production model of this or the same model originally i like smaller fret wire um let's talk pickups 35j i had one of these in hand so i decided to use it this is also a 35j but i think it's the model with ceramic magnet i just wanted to see if there's any difference in tone these are so easy to swap out i might eventually do a pj uh, combination um Preamp is dark glass brand, uh, the three band, it has the high mid, low mid, and then bass. Uh, there's no treble adjustment, but I do find that the high mid does seem to change the treble response a bit. Uh, there's a stacked EMG volume volume, and I did have to sort out how to connect that to the dark glass preamp. It was pretty easy. Uh, at this point, the... Uh, switch that you see here is just an, an, an inert switch it doesn't do anything right now that hole was already drilled into the body from a previous owner and i decided that i was just going to um, 
leave that for now because if I ever switch things out, that might become relevant. I might use that for something. Uh, I will be using this for studio, so maybe I'll put a kill switch or something like that in there. Um, the bridge is original. It came with the base. Uh, you can see how some of the gold plating is worn off of this. I searched and searched, and I was unable to find a new condition gold bridge that would fit this model. Uh, without modification, I could probably use one of the European models or whatever, or the USA model bridges, but those are expensive, and I really didn't want to have to do all that. So I will leave this as it is for now, but being that I do have some machinist skills and access to a mill, I might try milling my own brass uh, bridge and maybe even try to mill out some new saddles and maybe incorporate uh, the screw with springs so they're easier to adjust for intonation rather than the whole unlock, detune, reposition, guess where it goes, lock, tune up, and then see how far off you are. That's how it's done now. But once they're locked in, I guess, eh, you know, they'll, they'll be where... They'll be set up for if you you know for that set of strings or that brand and make and model and everything. But um, I would like to see if I can improve upon this design. Maybe down the road we'll see. I'll do a video. Actually affects the treble response. So this preamp is actually pretty usable. It's definitely growly. Um, if you heard earlier in the video when I was testing, there was a lot of buzz coming whenever I turned uh, the high mid up i was getting like, like a lot of uh, light buzz and things like that that's because my little amp out here is a battery powered not grounded it's you know you can't really judge the tone off of that i have plugged this into a practice amp and there's none of that buzzing going on and it's, in fact it's dead silent and it sounds nice and growly like a good specter should anyway i'm going to draw this to a a close and if you've enjoyed the video you know i usually ask uh, please hit the like subscribe buttons and uh we'll be back with more videos we have a few that that rosie's editing right now so until then